Welcome back to another episode of Collusion MC. I'm so glad you're back. I know it's been a few weeks, and it's been even longer in-game. As you can see, I've done a lot of things. I'm, I'm very sorry, I have to admit, I, I got sidetracked with making tons of farms, and next thing you know, it's been a few weeks. I promise I won't let it happen again. Oh yeah, you probably want to know what happened. It became incredibly obvious that I was outgrowing my base very quickly, so I had to expand the basement to make room for our new friends from the last episode, and also for more storage. With the basement expanded, I made the cell, I mean, home for our villager breeding setup, and moved them inside without absolutely any issues whatsoever. What are you looking at? With the villagers in place, I needed to attract an employee for the role of Director of Competitive Pricing. After a short commute, it was time for these villagers to get to work. I had planned for most of my villagers to be librarians, but that meant it would take quite a grind to get their trades just right. No. Nope. No. No. I ended up breaking and replacing a lot of lecterns. A lot of lecterns. Once I had my trades set up properly, it was time to brew lots and lots of discount juice. I would then flip the intense negotiation lever to allow Mr. Z to begin his, let's say, persuasive talks with the villagers. Once they had been turned into compliant subjects, it was time to splash them with some additional discount juice and be presented with a shiny bargain apple. Much better. Off camera, I mined just a few diamonds. I figured it is about time that I also opened the shop in the shopping district. I had chosen a very large plot of land to set up my shop. The shop I had planned to build would sell items from the nether. I knew it would be quite an undertaking and would require lots of farms to supply all of the items I'd be selling. And well, as you know from the flyover in the beginning, I did build lots of farms. So let's go into each one of those and see what they do and why I needed them. Starting the farm tour is my multi-level cactus farm. While I don't really need cactus for anything, I'm converting everything generated from this farm into bow meal for my nether tree farms. The drops funnel down into my basement where they're composted. It works all right. It's not the fastest, but it does supply me with quite a bit of bone meal. Also supplying me with bone meal is this double layered melon farm. One of the farms I need all of this bone meal for is the nether fungus farm. 
The farm bone meals some nylium, and the water washes away all the roots and fungi that are generated. We use the fungi for trees, and the roots get composted. Although, I may also sell some of those in my shop. This is my own design. Basically, I plant the fungus, I hit it with some bone meal, and it grows a tree. Afterwards, I climb up the scaffolds to the top and chop it down. This farm mainly specializes in the fungus blocks. I have another farm dedicated to the nether wart stems. Down below is the sorting system that splits up all the drops for me. Now I know this farm looks completely different than what was in the flyover. The previous farm kept breaking and finally when the TNT dippers blew themselves up, I just got fed up and tore the whole thing down. This new design is completely manual but it is much faster than the automated design. I put the fungus and then I bone meal it. Afterwards, the piston setup detects the stem when it's grown and pushes it aside. And it basically creates a giant chunk of nether stems that I can then chop down and mine up. Now this design is still being seen, so don't be surprised if it looks different in later episodes. In the basement, I have my nether wart farm. And next to that, I have the composting system that's tied to the cactus farm. In one of the walls of the basement, I have my basalt generator. It allows me to mine up as much basalt as I need for myself and for the shop. Oh, hey there, Mr. Dead. He's the unofficial shop mascot. In the nether, we have my magma cube farm. The iron golems lure the magma cubes into the pit of wither roses where they're killed. We get magma cream from that and we use that to make magma blocks. Since bees don't sleep in the nether, I set up a honey farm here. It's within AFK range of my gold farm so that works out great. Speaking of the gold farm. At the bottom of the farm, I have four pairs of piglins set up for bartering. The system dispenses gold ingots between each pair, and after they have inspected it and dropped their loot, it ends up in the hoppers which then gets filtered into my dedicated sorting system. The gold farm is automatic, but there's an option to place a honey block floor at the bottom of the kill chamber. This allows you to use a looting sword to kill them and possibly get some gold ingots. Typically, I don't do that, and I just let the fall damage take care of them while I AFK at build height. The farm also has some item filters to filter out all of the rotten flesh and gold swords. Those are then dispensed into a piece of cactus to destroy them. So all we're left with is just gold ingots and gold nuggets. Once I'm done with an AFK session, I'll craft all the gold nuggets into gold ingots, and then take them down to the piglin bartering setup below where the piglins make short work of it. And that's all the farms. I mean, obviously I'm gonna build a lot more of them, but for right now, that's still quite a few. Well, that's all the time we have left for today. I already have lots of cool stuff planned for the next episode, so be sure to stay tuned. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you'd like to see. So until next time, Safe travels, everyone.